Welcome to FRC Breakdowns, where we will analyze strategies used in the first robotics competition. For first updates now and from Team 2338 Gear Forward, I'm Joshua Gint, and for today we will be covering Finals Match 3 of the Midwest Regional 2018. Let's jump right in and cover the Helping Hand strategy. Alright, so let me just introduce the teams real quick. So over here on the red side, we have the captain of the number one alliance, 16 Bomb Squad. You have 6823 Wildcats from Milwaukee. And then you have uh, Team 2451 Ponage in the corner there where you can't really see them. Um, so then on the uh, blue side, uh, we have the Alliance Captain for the number two seed, 578R Cubed. Uh, you have 1706 The Ratchet Rockers. And you have Team 5822 in the corner here, uh, Wolf Bite out of Chicago. All right, so what we're going to see here in the uh, auto period, which I'll just let run in the background, is Ponage and Bomb Squad uh, trying to get the scale and the switch with multiple cubes. Here we have Ponage throwing up their second cube, and Bomb Squad here, very important part of this match, is that... Uh, Bomb Squad has put in two cubes into their switch instead of one. And we'll get to why that's very important later. Uh, opponent here uh, at the Midwest Regional was the only team to have a three cube scale auto, but they did not go for it here. Um, so at the beginning of this match, what you have is uh, one cube on the blue line switch. You have two for the red on the scale and one for the blue on the scale, and then two on the red alliance switch. This puts the blue uh, blue alliance in a very bad position because uh, Ponage is very quick and uh, overriding a, a switch, and with only one cube, that can happen, you know, just like that. Uh, on the scale, uh, they're already down by one, and Ponage is already putting up their the third cube for that alliance, and they can't even go really for the switch on the other side because they're already down by two, and they have uh, Wildcats to deal with who have been phenomenal this tournament uh, great second pick but it'll be they're already in a very bad position you know not just being down by 22 points at the end of auto so here you have bomb squad putting up their first cube and then ponage dropping a cube on in their null zone to give to bomb squad to lower their cycle time and uh, they do it twice here so then they already grab two of these cubes and then they're already grabbing the third cube from the blue alliance switch and this is a very good point in the match to stop at 112 seconds because the Red Alliance took three cubes away from the Blue Alliance switch side, which is, you know, this area right here. And um, they're fighting for the fourth. Uh, Opponage is not going to win this cube from our cubed, but they're raising the cycle time to where Bomb Squad can put on uh, basically take or what's already a one cube advantage on the scale to a two cube while the blue alliance is still really neglecting the switches um or at least their switch that being said wolf bite does have to go towards uh their switch now uh because ponage has put one on there which is taken away from their vault cubes or their possible vault cubes and the power-ups in this match tend or start to be very uh very key in deciding who wins this as of course you would imagine if you you know watch a lot of power up matches so here you have a bomb squad just you know doing their thing they do drop a cube but it's, it's fine because they're still winning and it's going to be tied up here but uh ponage is continuing to stack on that switch and like i said earlier wolf bite is just going to be wasting their their possible vault cubes now on trying to get that switch Whereas the red side or red team already has three in uh, three in boost, and uh, they have three spare cubes there are still, so they can uh, still get levitate. And then um, actually, I believe they have more behind the wall, but you just can't see them right now. Anyway, continuing on, uh, you will see that Wildcats just dropped a cube right there to again lower the. Uh, cycle time with bomb squad and make sure that they ha have another cube because this strategy is all about owning 50% of the cubes faster than your opponent and uh, the red alliance here uh, getting forced while uh, 
while Ponish still tries to get Bomb Squad more cubes. Or, you know, rectangular prisms, but whatever. <laughs> and, uh, you know, Bomb Squad just doing their thing. They're trying to get it back to at least level so that they can keep a very big lead going into, uh, going into this uh, end game period. And stopping right at the beginning of here, you see Red Alliance has just under a 30 point lead. And they just activated their boost power up so that they're going to stay level for the next 10 seconds, which already negates any sort of comeback because you're going to have to make up. Or Blue Alliance after this will have two points per second compared to the one for red. So they'll be gaining points, but it just won't be enough time. And this is where the uh, power cubes in the vault come back to haunt them because since they had to put so many here on their switch. They only have three in their vault, and they're not going to put any more in there, so they can't get those five points per cube or the uh, forcing, or I guess they want to force, they use levitate for the 30 points or 45 total, and they're going to lose all of that. Whereas the Red Alliance, I mean, they have eight in their, no, not eight, that's seven, um, seven in their vault, which already puts them in a uh, very uh, strong uh, position because. I mean, they only need one more cube for levitate, but what you're going to see here is that our cube is going to try to uh, climb, and um, they won't be able to. And also, 1706 Ratchet Rockers, they should be trying to climb here, but they're just not. Instead, they waste a cube by putting it on, their, on the switch there. That's not going to give them any points because the Red Alliance still got those two in auto from uh, Bomb Squad. And Bomb Squad climbs, they were, very, they were going to get at least one climb. They weren't going to attempt it because I think their uh, ramp actually broke some point in this match. But Blue Alliance just got some parks. And um, what you're going to see here is that there were some points tallied, not tallied up for the Red Alliance. So Red Alliance did win this match. But um, the Blue Alliance tried to do some... Or the Red Alliance got all the cubes that they needed so quickly that they were able to get, gain their lead. So what did you think of the strategy in that match, and how would your team have played it? Leave your comments below, and if you have a match or situation that you'd like us to cover, also leave it down there. For first updates now, and from Team 2338 Gear Forward, I'm Joshua Gint, and I'll see you guys next time.